Hey, so I want us to take a look at systems of three equations in three unknowns, linear systems in three equations in three unknowns. And just for fun, I just want to think about it kind of visually to consider all the possible cases that we could have. You know, each of those equations, let's just take a look at an example here. Here's a system of three linear equations and three unknowns. Each one of these equations actually corresponds to something visually, geometrically, but it's no longer in the plane because we have three uh, variables. You see, if that z weren't there, then that actually can be graphed as a straight line in the xy plane. The problem is we've got an actual unknown, uh, an actual third uh, variable, z, which changes everything and actually pops us up into three dimensions. And what's the three-dimensional analog of a line on the plane? Well, uh, the answer is a plane in space. So actually, if you were to somehow graph this in three dimensions, you would get a plane. Now, this is really hard to do, but I'll, I'll try to draw you a picture of this live, just for fun. But don't get mad at me if it doesn't look so good. But basically, what, what a graph like this would look like is something like this, kind of just a plane like this. You see? And now if you have another plane coming in, there's lots of things that can happen. The plane could kind of come in askew and intersect it in a different way. You see how that plane kind of cuts it? And it kind of cuts it along a line. And then if you have a third one coming in, maybe chopping it this way, you see what would happen. It would take that line and hit that line at one point somehow. I wonder how this looks to you. Can you even see what that looks like? Whoop, 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 whoop. And those three planes come together and meet in exactly one point. When that happens, then we'll have one solution. But there are lots of other things that could happen as well. You can imagine, for example, if two of those planes were actually to be parallel planes, then even if you hit it with a third plane, there'll be not one point that actually is in the intersection of all three of those planes, because two of them, in fact, are parallel. Or you could actually have a situation where, in fact, the two planes meet like this, and so they, they meet along that line, and the third plane actually meets along that same exact line. Then you have, in fact, a line of solutions, and you would have infinitely many solutions. So just as in other examples we've seen, with a system of three equations and three unknowns, we could have one solution, we could have infinitely many solutions, or we could have no solutions. So it's kind of cool that you can kind of see all those differences, uh, and this is the visualization of what that looks like. Anyway, let's try to solve this and, and, and see what this looks like and see if we can make some head or tail out of it. So here we go. It's, it's our usual fun stuff. We're going to now uh, use various methods to write an equivalent system and try to get it into a triangular form. So what I'm going to do first off, just because I'm looking at this, in fact, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I look at this and I see something that's just blaring out in, in my mind. I can't help it. It's like the volume is turned up to 11. If I took these two equations and added them, check out the conspiracy. These terms kill each other, zero. These two kill each other, zero. And these two just give me a negative z. So that tells me that even though I don't know where I'm going with this, I've got to add those. It's, like it's a compulsion. I have to add those two equations. So I'll keep the first one there. Write the whole thing out. And now I'm going to replace the second one by the sum of these two. And so if I add these two together, I get 0. I'm not going to write anything there. Add these two together, I get 0. I'm not going to write anything there. Add these two together, I get negative z. If I add these two together, I get 4. Awesome. And then I'll just write this one down right now. Well, that's amazing because look what I've done. I've already gotten something just with z alone. So let me actually now um, switch the order of these things. And so I'll write this equation third and this equation second. So uh, I'm going to write this. Oh, in fact, you know what? I'm going to write this. I'm going to move this way up to the top since I already seem to have done that. To the top. Then I'll write this one. You can write them in any order you want as I'm proving live. And then I'll write that last one, which I really like. OK. And now what do I do? Well, I notice, again, there's an amazing conspiracy. And I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm sorry. And I want you to not be able to help it either. But check it out. These two equations look very similar. In fact, if I were to multiply this equation by negative 2 and add it to this equation, check out what would happen. I'd get a lot of cancellation. So let's try to do that right now. I'm going to keep the first equation right where it is. I'm 
going to keep the last equation right where it is. But in place of the second equation, I'm going to multiply this one by negative 2 and add it to the old second equation. And just, just for me, I like to do this. Don't tell anyone. There we go. All right, so here we go. You ready? Distribute. Negative 2x plus 2x is 0. Great. Negative times a negative is a positive. Positive 4y. Positive 4y plus minus 4y is 0 as well. This is looking good. You see the conspiracy? And then here I see uh, negative 2x plus, I'm sorry, negative 2z plus 2z is equal to 0. Wow. So everything is 0 on this side. And then what do I have on this side? I have negative 2 times uh Neg times 2, which is negative 4, and negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. And so that is an equivalent system to the first one. Well, now check it out. This one's a little disturbing. Are you disturbed? I hope so, because if this is an equivalent system to that, this tells me that, okay, yeah, z, uh, you know, z is going to equal negative 4, but who cares? Look at this one. This says that 0 has to equal negative 5. Well, we know 0 doesn't equal negative 5, so in fact, that's impossible. And what does that mean? It means that there can't be any solutions to the original system because we just took the original system and created equivalent uh, systems, which means that every single system has the same solutions until we got down to something that we can see. This has no solutions which forces no solutions to the original one. So here's an example where, in fact, somehow you have kind of parallel planes, if you think of it visually. The planes are parallel, and therefore, in fact, there's not one or many solutions to this system. Wow, that was kind of a surprise. I, did you know that was coming? I didn't. All right, let's try one more, just for fun. So here's a system I want us to take a look at, see if we can analyze it, and report if there are no solutions, exactly one solution, or lots of solutions. All right, so again, I'm just going to be totally frank with you. I love the first one. I love it. I love it. It's all simple. It equals zero. You can't do better than that in life. So I'm just going to copy that down before I lose it because that's just awesome. Now let's take a look at these other ones here. Notice that, wow, if I were to multiply this one by negative one and add it to this, I'm going to get the x's to go away. So let's actually try that right now live. So let's take negative this one and add it to this one. So that's going to be now negative negative. That's just x plus negative x is 0. Negative this one is now 2y plus y is going to be um, 3y. And negative this is going to be negative z plus negative 5 is negative 6z. And negative this is now positive 1 plus 2 is 3. And I'll keep the same equation, the second equation, the same. So all I did, again, was take the uh, second equation, multiply it through by negative 1, and added it to the third and replace that and make that the new third. So that's kind of looking good. And now, actually, I see something really good. I should just add these two equations and put that in the place of equation 2, because then you see what happened? These guys would give me a 0 here. So let's do that next. That seems like a great idea. And by the way, there's not just one way of doing this. Like, if you're looking at this with me and saying, gee, I would have done something else differently, do it. As long as it's correct, it's going to lead you to the same answer. There's lots of different ways of doing this. There's not just one way. I'm just sharing, I'm just sharing with you how I think about it. But if you think about it a different way, that's awesome. And you should let me know how you think about it. I'd love to hear it. Now I'm going to replace this second equation with the sum of these two. x minus x is 0. y uh, minus 2y is just negative y. And then uh, z plus z is plus 2z. And this plus that is negative 1. I'm going to keep everything else here. Oh, by the way, notice I can do something here. Do you notice that I can multiply everything through, uh, divide everything through by 3? Let me just do that. There's a common uh, factor everywhere of 3. So let's just do that. So then I get a y minus 2z equals uh, 1. And now I look at these things, and I notice something really, really cool. What if I were to um, add these two equations and put that in place of equation uh, 3? what would I see? Well, this is really cool. And I like when this happens, actually. It's kind of fun. It's a little moment of excitement. I'm going to keep everything else the same. 
But if I add these two, check it out. This plus that is zero. This plus that is zero. This plus that is zero. Nice. Zero equals zero. So what does that tell me? What it tells me is that this is now in triangular form, and I still don't know what z equals. And you know why? Because z is a free variable. z can be anything at all. There's no constraints on z, because that last equation in this triangular form says 0 equals 0, which is true, no matter what z equals. So in fact, we can actually pick z to be anything we want, and once we have z, we can back substitute all the way back to find the corresponding y and the, the corresponding x. And since there are infinitely many choices for z, there are infinitely many solutions to this system. Now, how can I write that down and kind of how it makes sense? So just to kind of write it down, here's how we do it. What we do is we just pick, pick something for z. So what do you want to call z? Let's call it uh, a. So let's let z be the number a. And we understand that a can be anything at all. Okay, that's where the infinitely many solutions are going to come in. But now we can back substitute and figure out what everything else is supposed to be. Because if we put a in for z, I can now solve this for y. And I'm going to do that here on the little side, little side calculation. And I'm going to use my side calculation pen. So I see negative y plus 2z, which is 2a, equals negative 1. And now I'm going to solve this for y, but I'm thinking about the a as kind of, I know it, but I don't know what, what exact value it is. So I'm going to bring this over to the other side and see negative y equals negative 1 uh, minus 2a. And then if I multiply everything through by a negative a 1, then I see y equals 1 plus 2a. And so now I see that if z equals a, then that's, this is what y has to equal. y has to equal that. So I can write that in. y, now we know, equals 1 plus 2a. Awesome. And how can we find x? There's no problem in finding x, because I can just use, for example, this fact, and plug in this for z and this for y, and I can figure out what uh, x has to equal in terms of a. So x plus y, which is plus 1 plus 2a, plus z, which is just another a, that has to equal 0. Well, if we simplify that, that's x plus 1 plus 2a, and, and another a is a total of 3a's, equals 0. And so what does x equal? If I bring that over to the other side, I see it equals uh, negative 1 minus 3a. So that's what x has to equal. So let's write that in. This is awesome. So awesome. <laughs> And so what that shows me is that we now see there are infinitely many solutions. And I can write the solutions as an ordered triple if I want, which I always like to do. So x, y, and z, remember the order. Well, the x equals negative 1 minus 3a. The y is 1 plus 2a. And the z is just a. And so here's an example where we have infinitely many solutions, because this is true no matter what a is. So if you pick different values of a, you'll actually find different solutions. And so, for example, let's just for fun consider different values of a. So let's say we consider a to equal 0. Let's say we consider a, uh, if we consider a to be 0, then what does this give me? If I put in 0 for a, this gives me a negative 1. This gives me a 1, and this gives me a 0. So that is a solution. And if you take those values, x, y, and z, and plug them in to each one of these, you'll see it satisfies. If I let uh, the parameter a, let's say, be negative 1, then what do I get here? If I put a negative 1 here, negative 1 times uh, negative 3, that's um, positive 3 minus 1 is going to be a 2. If I put a negative in for a here, I see 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. And then this is negative 1. And so you see another different solution is the order triple 2, negative 1, negative 1. Plug it in to all of these, you'll see they all are satisfied. If you put in 5, I mean, pick any number you want. I don't care. Put in 5 in here. Uh, this gives us what? This gives us negative 16. 
This is going to give us a 11, and this gives us 5. Again, plug in x, y, z into all, each of these things, and we're going to see a satisfied uh, system of equations. So what's the point? The point is here's an example where we see that there's some kind of conspiracy, that, that either all the, the planes meet up along one line or all the planes actually meet up along a plane. In this case, actually, they all meet up along a line, it turns out. So they're all meeting along, all three of these equations meet along the same exact line, and that line we're describing in this way, once you give me the A, I can figure out all the other, all the other values for X and for Y, and of course, Z is A. So this is what it looks like when you have infinitely many solutions. You, you've got this parameter, or maybe even a couple of parameters that are free, and then once you kind of allow them to be anything, you can figure out everything else. Infinitely many solutions, absolutely cool. Welcome to the world of three by three systems of equations, three variables, lots of things can happen, and if you just work through it systematically and think through it, it all makes sense. Congratulations, I'll see you soon.